Just let me see it, she said, annoyed. Toby handed her his phone. She called a number and her phone rang. Then she typed something into his phone and handed it back. I added myself as a contact. As a contact. You know, if you ever need me to save you again. Toby actually cracked a real smile. Okay, thanks. Toby went home after school. Usually, he was starving by the time he strolled into the kitchen. But today he felt different. Nervous, agitated and he definitely had a serious loss of appetite. He grabbed a banana when his phone alerted him with a text from Tabitha. Hey, I know an excellent counsellor you can talk to. No way. Okay, fine. Toby shook his head and clicked off the phone. But he couldn't help smiling a little. Tabitha was kind of cool. She took in everything he told her and didn't look at him weird. It was cool to have a new friend. Not that he'd tell her that. Toby, walked to a few, uh, Toby talked to a few kids at school, but he wouldn't call them friends. He used to have a best friend named Manny, but he moved away with his family when Toby was in middle school. Since then, Toby kind of shut himself from other kids. Maybe it was time to open up again. Just to keep up his energy, he attempted to eat the banana. He got about half of it down before he felt like gagging. His head jerked up when a knock sounded at the front door. Who could that be? He answered the door to a clean-cut police officer with brown skin, short buzzed hair and a moustache. Toby swallowed hard. He still had the half-eaten banana in his hand. I'm looking for Toby Billings, he said. Th th that's me. Toby adjusted the beanie on his head. I'm Officer Jimenez. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. I'm Officer Jim, Toby. I'm here about the break-in and vandalism at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Games. Dan Harbour say stated that you worked there and you were on shift that evening. He gave me your address. Uh-huh. Officer Jim had a small notebook and pen in his hand. Can you walk me through your shift that evening? Toby looked at his banana. Well, um, I vacuumed the carpet in the main party room and arcade, swept up in the bathrooms, wiped down tables, put up chairs, picked up trash from the floor, my regular stuff. What time did you end your shift? Mr. Harbour said you must have forgotten to write on your timesheet when you left. Toby scratched his neck with his free hand. Um, yeah, I was off at 10pm. At uh, 10? 11pm. I must have forgotten to sign out. Yeah, because I'd run out. Officer Jim wrote something down in the notebook. What time did you last see the game before it was randomised? Um, well, after closing. Wait, should I have said that? So around 10pm? He nodded. Yep. Yeah. I think so. There were no signs of a break in, Toby. Did you notice anyone hanging around who wasn't supposed to be there after closing? He blew it out of breath, shook his head slowly. Nope. No one. Same thing I'd told Dan. I checked the stools in the play area where kids tend to hide. Officer Jim looked directly into Toby's eyes. Toby, I want you to be completely honest with me. Yeah, okay. Did you vandalise the game hide and seek? What? I have to ask. You were the last one to see the game. You were working in the restaurant near the time of the crime. Everyone else was in the kitchen. You didn't sign out at the end of your shift. Maybe you were in a hurry because you'd vandalised the game. Maybe you were upset with your boss or someone. I've seen it happen before. And you didn't want to get into trouble, so you ran. Is, this, is that how it happened? Toby stepped back. No, it wasn't me. Yes, it was. Okay, he said sternly. That's all for now. Let Mr. Harbour know if you if you remember anything else, or if you want to tell him anything else. Yeah, okay. Officer Jim gave a nod of his head. Have a good day. Toby nodded in return. He closed the door, still tense. He wondered if the officer believed him. It didn't sound like it. It sounded like he thought Toby did it. He wondered if he was going to get caught. Toby scrubbed a hand down his face. He had too many things to focus on. He was trying his best to figure out how to be free of the shadow. He also had to worry if he was going to get caught for breaking hide and seek. One thing at a time, please. He walked into the kitchen and threw the half-eaten banana in the garbage, then detoured into the front room. Beside his dad's recliner was a small tray table with a lighter and an ashtray. He grabbed the lighter and flicked it, but it didn't light. He shook the lighter and flicked it again. This time, the flame lit. He bit his bottom lip, staring at the small flame. Maybe. He released the igniter, then shook his head muttering, no freaking way. He tossed the lighter back on the tray. Was that a cop at the door? Toby jumped and whirled toward his dad. Dad, you scared me. I didn't know you were home. Where's your car? 
Getting a tune-up? I took the day off. Why the cop? What did he want with you? Toby cracked his knuckles. Um, there was a break-in at Freddy's. Just a routine, questioning the employees who were, the, who were there that night. Are you sure that's all it was? Toby blinked. Yeah, why wouldn't I be? You're not in any kind of trouble with breaking the law. No, Dad. But he was in trouble. Dad nodded, sat in his recliner, and turned on the television. Toby walked away, then turned around to stare at his dad. He wanted to tell him the truth. He wanted to tell him that he cheated the game and destroyed it in anger. That the game that had somehow attached to him and followed him home. He wanted to tell him so his dad could help him. So he could do what parents were supposed to do and help their kids when they were in trouble. Not just go through the motions of life like everything was okay when nothing was okay. Not, pret not to pretend as if he ever had a wife. Um, what? Oh yeah, as if he never had a wife. And Toby and Connor never had a mom. Not to pretend as if he had two happy sons who never called each other names or fought with their fists. As if life was all about working for a paycheck and watching sports. Dad? Yeah, Tobes? Dad said, not taking his eyes off the television. Why didn't mum leave us? Dad didn't move his head from the screen. He didn't even flinch from the unexpected question. Toby wondered, when was the last time he ever saw his dad express any emotion other than excitement or disgust from watching sports? His dad was pretty much the mellow type. Toby had never seen him get seriously angry other than to yell at the refs on television. When he told Connor or Toby something, it was all very calm and rational. Maybe it was a bonus to have a parent who didn't yell at you or scold you. A minute passed as he waited for an answer from his dad, then two minutes. After five minutes, he realised he wasn't going to get an answer. He didn't know if it was because his dad didn't have one, or if he didn't feel Toby could handle the truth. Toby left the room to get ready for work. Toby kept up with his, with his regular routine and went in an hour before his shift to play games in the arcade. When he arrived, he noticed a hide-and-seek door propped open with a sign that said, that said, out of order. Curious about hide and seek, he slid his hands inside the pockets and walked inside the game room. There was a tall, skinny guy standing by the control box. He had a laptop in his arms and seemed to be rebooting the game. His hair was blonde and spiky and he wore thick framed glasses. Hey, Toby said to the guy. How's it going? All right, he said, eyeing him. You know the game's out of order. You supposed to be in here? Toby cleared his throat. Yeah, well, I work here. Gotta start my shift soon. The tech guy seemed to relax a little. Well, truthfully then, I'm not doing so good. Hide and seek here won't reboot. It says it's rebooting, but once it starts again, it goes back to the previous game every time. Must be some sort of wiring issue. It's stuck? Yeah, stuck in the game mode with the last player. Uh, some kid named Toby. All the blood seemed to rush out of Toby's head. He felt faint. Really? Can you just shut it down and restart it? Normally. Yeah. But something's off. I'm telling you, it won't stop the game. Never seen anything like it. Must be defunct. Dan ain't going to hear, like to hear that. Not after he found out whoever tore up the game also took the rabbit. What? Bonnie the rabbit, the character, the black cutout rabbit for the game is gone. Whoever messed up the game took the rabbit right off the wall like some kind of souvenir. I can't believe it. Probably stuck in their room for, or threw darts at it or something. Kids these days. No offence. Yeah, none taken. The tech guy shut his laptop. Well, going to give Dan more bad news. I advised him to put in a camera from the beginning, but he was already dishing out a boatload for this game. Anyway, I'd stay clear of him today if I were you, kid. Maybe he shouldn't have ever installed this game. Yeah. Anyway, Dan's a good guy. He just wanted the best for the business. Give the family some entertainment, a place to have fun. But this is how he re he's repaid. Sucks, you know. When the tech guy left, Toby quickly strode through the kitchen, smelling pepperoni and melted cheese. He walked to the single employee bathroom and closed and locked the door behind him. He leaned his hands on either side of the pedestal sink, staring into the small mirror on the wall. He stared into the darkness at his back, with all the anger and frustration he had inside of him. He hadn't taken the rabbit cut out from the game. No, it had decided to leave all on its own, with Toby. And as Toby stared hard at the shadow, two eyes opened and blinked at him. Toby lurched back and yelped. His heart pounded like a drum. He grabbed at the door, trying to open it, but because he was staring at the horror in the mirror, he'd forgot to lock it. He took his eyes off the shadow for a second, unlocked the handle, and whipped open the door. He rushed out and ran into Dan. Toby stopped short, breathing hard. Uh, Dan. Dan gave him a weird look. You alright, kid? 
Toby cracked his knuckles, trying not to shake in front of his boss. Yeah, why? You look nervous about something. Toby adjusted his beanie. Um, no, I'm fine. Really. His face heated because he was far from fine. Dan eyed him some more. Okay, kid, whatever you say. Then he walked into his office. Toby sagged against the bathroom door. His phone signalled with a new text. It was Tabitha again. What about a herbalist? They can give you stuff to calm your nerves. No way. Well, it was just an idea. I'm here at Freddy's. Come meet me in the arcade. Surprised, Toby clicked off his phone as he hurried to the arcade to find Tabitha, who was peering over a kid's shoulder as he played a game. Reggie was right beside her, eating pink cotton candy on a stick. Toby stopped at her side, rubbing his damp palms on the shirt. What are you doing here? He was already nervous, and it made him even more nervous to have her at the scene of the crime that he confessed to her. When he told her, when he told her his secrets, she'd been someone separate from his everyday life. She didn't know much about him or Freddy's. But now that his separate worlds were colliding, it felt weird and uncomfortable. Tabitha smiled as she looked around the arcade. This is a cool place. I've never actually been here. My parents aren't into places like these. It's a family pizza restaurant. She shrugged. They're vegans. She looked back to, to Toby, her smile dropping away. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, fine. Who's your friend, Toby? Reggie butted in. Hey, I'm Reggie. Tabitha glanced at Reggie. Tabitha. Reggie looked at Toby and lifted his eyebrows a couple of times in an annoying way. You come here often? He asked her. No, first time. Toby frowned at Reggie. He knew Tabitha wasn't a regular. What was up with him? He took Tabitha by the elbow and guided her away. Over her shoulder, he watched Reggie keep pointing to Toby, then to his own back. Then he made a big gesture like he was huge. And then a scary face. Then he mouthed very slowly. Shadow. Bigger. Toby rolled his eyes, then asked Tabitha, What are you doing here? I want to see the game. Toby shook his head. No way. Can't. It's out of order. No one is supposed to be in there. Can I at least see the outside of it? Please, I'm curious. Toby sighed. He didn't think it was such a good idea, but he felt if he didn't let her see it, she'd just keep on about it until she got her own way. Fine, but then you better go. Okay. And look, I trusted you with this. Don't make me regret it. You won't. I promise. She crossed her heart with a finger. Toby led her out of the arcade and to the door of Hide and Seek. He crossed his arms as she studied the shadowed rabbit and the logo. Seems so innocent. But then you know it's something dark and scary to her friend. She looked at Toby. How do you feel? Like it's always there and I'm never going to get rid of it. Toby shifted uncomfortably. Why is he always telling her stuff like that? You'll beat this, Toby. I'm making a list of ideas, like the ones I've been texting you about. I'm going to help you figure out how to solve this. We're going to get you in a better place. Toby just stared at her not knowing what to say, other than why. Why did she want to help him? Why did she even care? He wasn't sure she wanted her help. He, she, he wasn't sure he wanted her help anyway. He wasn't sure he could totally trust someone in that way. It had been so long since he trusted anyone. He'd learned being let down pretty much sucked. He adjusted his beanie and sighed. Whatever you want to do. Toby was running from someone or something. He was in a park at night. The pale light of the full moon washed across the scene. Stars twinkled above. Trees and bushes loomed across the area surrounding a small playground. His heartbeats were running a mile a minute. His breaths were coming out of his, out of his mouth at a pace he was certain he couldn't maintain. He hid behind a tree, trying to catch his breath. Something dark and fast torpedoed past him. So fast, Toby's hair moved as if, it, as if brushed by the wind. Holy cow, Toby whispered. It was the shadow, but somehow it moved faster than his eyes could follow. How is he going to escape something so quick? He launched himself off the tree, running by a grocery store and a school. The streets were empty of cars and people. He spotted a police station up ahead, had to get there and get help. He shoved through the doors. Someone please help me. There's something after me, please. But when he looked around, there were no officers. Hello? Where is everyone? Come on, I need help here. But the place was deserted, as if everyone had just walked away at the same time. Toby jerked his head toward the doorway. He felt the darkness coming. He wasn't sure how, but he knew it was getting closer. He whipped his head to the left and to the right, his nerves scrambling throughout his body. He spotted an empty desk and dove behind it. Oh, and dove behind it. No, it's not a dove, it's not a bird. He spotted an empty desk and dove behind it, squatting underneath it, pulling his knees to his chin. He heard the doors to the police station burst open. Toby started at the... Sh at the sound and squeezed his eyes shut. 
please don't find me, please don't find me. The shadow raced past the desk. Toby heard the clank of the jail cell doors. Finding it empty, the darkness roared at him with the timber of a thousand angry beasts. Monstrous, terrifying. Toby bit his bottom lip in order not to scream himself. Um, his entire body started to shake. The shadow rushed by the desk again, and Toby sat for a moment, waiting to get some distance between him and the shadow. He licked his dry lips. I think it's gone. He slowly crawled out from his hiding place, but when he stood, he froze in horror. The shadow reared itself before him, its darkness crackling with energy. The shadow's narrow eyes, narrowed eyes peered down at Toby. Toby stepped back, and the shadow moved closer. Stay away from me, Toby shouted. But the shadow continued to lurch closer. The nearer it got, the bigger it became, until it loomed over Toby like a mountain of unforgiving darkness. The shadow's power had created a vortex of energy that blew through the room. Toby's hair flew back, and his clothes flattened against his body. Toby threw his hands over his head as the darkness crashed down, swallowing and surrounding him. Anger, despair, fear seemed to fill him up. He swung out with fists in terror and rage, trying to fight it, but his arms just swung through the air. The shadow devoured him. It leached into his eyes and through his nostrils. Toby shrieked, swallowing the darkness down his throat. Toby woke up screaming. No! He jumped out of bed, fell to the floor. Darkness was all around him. He launched himself backward, his entire body shaking. He hit a cold wall and he realised he was home in his room. It wasn't real, just a nightmare, but it had seemed so real. It was one of the worst nightmares of his life. His eyes stung and he began to cry, his shoulders shaking. Because if he'd learned one thing from the nightmare, it was that the shadow was so much stronger than him and that it wanted to win at all costs. He wiped at his leaky nose and howled in frustration. He hated this. He hated the shadow. He wanted it gone. He reached for his back, clawed at it. Get off of me, he scratched. He scraped. Leave me alone. He tore off his shirt and dug into his skin as if he could tear the shadow away. He clawed and slashed with his own hands, digging into his skin. Ugh. I want you gone. He felt the burn of the scratches, the drips of blood. Just leave me alone, he screamed and cried some more, curling into a ball on the floor. But he knew the shadow was still there, that it wouldn't leave. He could sense it as if it were part of him now. Do, Tobes, what is up with you lately? Connor asked when Toby walked through the kitchen. Connor stood at the kitchen counter, eating two breakfast sandwiches. He looked at Toby with wide eyes, as if seeing him in a way he'd never seen him before. Are you still sick? Maybe we should get Thal to take you to the doctor or something. Just leave me alone, Connor. There was no way Connor could handle with, with what was really going on with him. Tobes, I'm serious. You need help. I can tell something's wrong with you. You walk around like a freaking zombie. You're barely eating, and you're not whiny self. And you're not your whiny self. It's weird, and you're already weird, so that makes you weirder than usual. Shut up. Toby made a face and shook his head. Don't act like you care. Connor beat his chest with his sandwich. What? What do you mean? I care. Whatever. You only care about yourself and, you, and how you think you're the best at everything. That's not true. And just because I'm good at stuff, a lot of stuff, you don't have to get all bent about it. Toby gave a small laugh. Every day of your life, you tell me how you're the best and I'm nothing. That I'm a loser. Connor didn't have to say much to that. So he just said, okay, well, I'm pretty close to being the best. Toby's eyes widened. No, you're not, Connor. You're not the best, and I'm not the best. You only think you are because for some reason you and Dad think you're so great. So pathetic is more like it. Connor rolled his eyes. This is about Dad, isn't it? You're jealous. Toby jerked back. What? You're jealous because Dad and I spend a lot of time watching sports. Dad always invites you to watch with us, you know that. Why don't you hang out with us instead of barricading yourself in your room? Toby swallowed hard. You don't even know what you're talking about, so stop. Whatever, Tobes. You know it's true. But I'm not going to argue with you when you're practically ready to, ne to keel over at any minute. Do you even know how stupid you always sound at being the best at everything? There has to be someone out there better than you. You know that, right? Connor shrugged his shoulder. Whatever, Tobes. Listen, I told you. I'm not going to. You listen. Toby pointed a finger at Connor, ticked off and tired of all the dumb things that came out of his mouth. Just so you know, there's a new game at Freddy's and I'm playing it right now. 
and I'm winning. Yeah, it was a half truth. Toby was still playing this hide and seek game with the shadow. He'd just taken the game home with him. He was pretty sure the rabbit was definitely winning though. But Connor didn't have to know that. Connor tossed his sandwich on the plate and crossed his arms. Oh, the truth finally comes out. There's a, new game at There's a new game at Freddy's and you didn't even want to tell me so that you could try and beat me at something. News flash, news flash little brother. It doesn't count until I've played. And once I do, I'll beat it and take my rightful spot at the top. Toby smiled as an idea dawned on him. Sure. Connor saw his smile and frowned. Sure, what? Sure you'll beat me. Toby walked out of the kitchen and went down the hallway. Of course I will, little brother. Connor followed him. He always had to get the last word. That's the reality. Toby walked into the bathroom. He turned toward his brother, crossed in arms. Connor stood outside of the door. So what's the game called? Hide and seek. Perfect. Sounds like a kid's game. So it'll be easy. I'll go there after work tonight and snag the top spot. Not a problem. No, you won't, Toby told him. Connor just stared at Toby. Why not? Toby nodded toward the mirror, finally wanting his brother to see the truth. To see this awful shadow that wouldn't leave him alone. Toby had been the ultimate player by battling the shadow and he wanted Connor to finally know. He looked back at Connor. Because I'm still playing and I'm going to win if it's the last thing I do. He pointed his finger at Connor. I'm going to beat you, Connor. You just wait and see. I'll be the winner and you'll be the freaking loser. It's going to be the best day of my life. Do you hear me? Best day of my life. Connor didn't look in the mirror. He just stared at Toby with wide eyes. I see. Then he simply shook his head and raised his hands as if surrendering. You know what, Tobes? Fine. You go ahead. Beat me. I want you to. Toby's mouth dropped open. What? I give up being the best. It's getting old, fighting with you all the time. I mean, dude, have you looked at yourself lately? Really looked at yourself in the mirror? You look sick and exhausted and you're still fighting with me. Like it's all that matters in the world instead of your health. This whole competition thing has gotten way out of hand and it's time to stop. So if it takes you winning and me losing, then I'm done. Toby didn't know what to say. Anyway, I got to get to work. If you need to stay home, do it. I'll tell dad you were really sick. Just get some rest, little brother. Connor turned away. Toby watched Connor down the hallway and disappear, then heard the front door slap, um, shut. Connor didn't care to be the best anymore. After all the games, all the competitions, all the fighting for years, and he had practically conceded to Toby. In a daze, Toby turned around toward the bathroom mirror. Toby stared at himself in the mirror, really stared at himself. His skin was paler than paler than he'd ever seen it. His cheeks were sunken in. His eyes looked like pe like dark pits, pits in his face. Sorry. He finally moved his gaze to the shadow. Clawing and scratching at his skin must have really ticked it off. Not only had it grown in size, but his eyes stared at him with a chilling glare. Then something moved within its face, and that's when he noticed the shadow had formed a mouth. A row of spiked teeth flashed into a smile. Toby's eyes widened in shock and he started to pant in short breaths. The shadow radiated fear and anger, and just like in his dream, the shadow loomed behind him, a predator waiting to strike. Toby felt the urge to cower into a ball on the floor. The shadow was too powerful, too strong, and Toby knew he was too tired and too weak to fight it anymore. Why are you doing this to me? He yelled at the mirror. I just want this done, over. Exhausted, Toby leaned his elbows on the bathroom counter, placing his face in his hands. Silent tears streamed down his cheeks. He finally accepted that he was never going to be rid of the shadow. It was going to stay attached to him. Forever. He tried everything he could do, he could think of, to get it off. Nothing seemed to hurt the darkness. The more he tried, the bigger, the stronger, and more horrifying it became, and the worse it made him feel. Maybe the shadow had attached to him so easily because he'd been in a bad place emotionally. He'd been wrapped up in some crazy competition with his brother all these years. Nothing Connor did, or anyone did, had made him a loser. It had been his own sense of competition and messed up beliefs. True jealousy of Connor and Dad's relationship had made him think of himself as an outcast, like he didn't belong even in his own home. But if he was being honest, he was the one who had slowly separated himself further and further from his dad and brother because he wanted to win. All these years, he wanted to be a winner just like Connor, but
but none of that seemed to matter compared to the torture he'd endured with the shadow for the past few days. He raised his gaze to the shadows and took a cue from his brother. Okay, he said. You win. You beat me. I give up. Whatever. I don't care anymore. At that moment, Toby blinked as he felt the heaviness of his back lighten. Surprised, he slowly stood up straight in front of the mirror. The shadow was still there, but it had gone back to the size of when he'd first seen in his a senior in his bedroom. The eyes and mouth had disappeared into the darkness. All he felt was a little tickle in the middle of his back once again. With that realisation, it was like something clicked inside of him. A veil had lifted, and he saw everything with sudden clarity. Just like Toby, the shadow had only wanted to win. Toby walked out of the bathroom to change, and his cell phone rang. He looked at the screen and read Tabitha's name before answering. Hello? Hey, how are you? Do you need any more saving yet? She asked. Nope. Meet me before school, uh, behind the bleachers. I have some more ideas to run you by about the shadow. No, I'm not going to school today. Why? What's happened? Toby rubbed his face. Look, I'm ready to end this once and for all. It's time. What do you mean, Toby? Just don't worry about it. I know what I have to do now. What? What do you have to do? Does it involve... Reiki healing? I, I don't know what that is. I will look that up afterwards. <laughs> Because uh, that's at the top of my list. What? Toby shook his head. No, you've got, got to go, Tab. Uh, if I forget to tell you, you're a good friend. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait! Toby clicked off the call, uh, then turned off his phone. It was time to go back to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Games. It was time to finish Hide and Seek. Toby walked into Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Games with a cool determination. A deadly calm had come over him. He finally knew what he had to do to finish this. It had come to him suddenly. How he cheated hide and seek and then the shadow rabbit had followed him home. How the technician said the game was still in play. It wouldn't reboot because Toby had to finish the game. The darkness had wanted him to concede because Toby had cheated. It was all clear to him now. He'd been so fixated on the fact that the shadow was on him that he hadn't focused on the end game. This wasn't like Ultimate Battle Warrior where you beat each other senseless. That was a strategy. This was a strategy game. The toughest one he had ever played in his life. He walked into the restaurant and there were only a few little kids playing in the play area and arcade since it was a school day. He walked through the arcade and of course Reggie was there. Toby realised Reggie was always there and he wondered if the kid even had a home. This time Reggie just stared behind Toby as if he couldn't take his eyes off the shadow. Guess uh, you never got rid of the shadow, Reggie said. At least it's small again dude. Last time I saw you it was massive. I have to complete the hide and seek game. Reggie blinked. I thought it was broken. It's in play and I'm going to finish it. That's the game that started all of this. But how, we, how are you going to do that when it's all busted up? I'll figure it out. Reggie nodded and held out his fist. Respect, dude. The fire's back within you. Do, you. do what you gotta do. Toby tapped his fist to Reggie's and walked past him. Hey, Reggie said, and Toby turned back around. Can I have that girl Tabitha, Tabitha's digits? Toby just shook his head and made his way to the game, stopping at the door of hide and seek. The out of order sign was still taped to the door. It was locked, so T Toby put in coins to open it and entered the room. There were fresh white patches on the wall where Toby had busted open a few holes. All of the broken pieces were gone off the floor. The small barricade was completely torn down. There were no new cutouts on the wall. The pegs were still bare. Taking a breath, Toby went to the control box and turned on the power. Instrumental music blared through the speakers. After it completely booted up, Toby saw his name still in play. Toby dug out a peppermint toothpick from his pocket and slipped it into his mouth. He adjusted the beanie on his head. A voice bellowed from the speakers. Are you ready to continue or do you forfeit the game? Toby's finger hovered over the forfeit button. Once he pushed the button, uh, once he pushed the bottom, he knew everything would go back to normal. The shadow would be gone and the rabbit would return to hide and seek. He would have to go back to his life of being in control of his, bod of his own body. And he could be free. Toby bit his bottom lip as a familiar feeling spread over him. You see, he couldn't really get over the fact that the shadow had attached to him. That the shadow had played the ultimate cheat on Toby by making him hurt himself. By making him believe he was going crazy just so that he could win the freaking game. The shadow had wanted to win and Toby had let it. Toby shut his eyes, trembling with anger. You thought you could beat me, he said. You thought you could turn my own cheating back on me. 
Well, I got a surprise for you. I'm not a loser. You're the loser. He opened his eyes, punched down on the continue button with heated determination, then turned his back to the park wall. He felt the shadow's anger slam over him. Jaw tight, Toby rushed backward toward the pegs where the tree was supposed to hang and rammed himself onto the sticks. The pegs stabbed through his back. Toby's body stiffened as he, gra as he gasped. His toothpick dropped from his mouth. He felt the shadow release. The dark energy faded away from him as if it never existed. I won, he whispered as blood dripped from his mouth. <sighs> he smiled right before his eyes gently closed. The instrumental music restarted through the speakers. Welcome to hide and seek. Enter your name to try to find Bonnie. And let's begin. Oh, that's the end of hide and seek. <laughs> um, I'm. By the way, I didn't really talk that much through, throughout that entire story. Um, usually in in the audiobooks that I do with my reactions, I I do talk a lot. Um, about like possible theories and where the story is going to go, but I I actually didn't see where that story was going really. Um, it, I don't really know what to say about it. It it was it was quite a good story, I think. Um, again, not one of my favourites. Um, what happened at the end? So the ending, I mean, he pro he died. He died. Toby was Toby died. Did he do that on purpose or? I don't know. Like, did he did he kill himself? <laughs> I the the line that I think was quite cr creepy is. Uh, well, actually, there are a few lines here. I won, he whispered, as blood dripped from his mouth. He smiled right before his eyes gently closed. Like, that line is terrifying by itself. And then the next line, the instrumental music restarted through the speakers. You can just imagine a little boy, um, like, with things through his back. What was it? Uh, like, pegs through his back. Just a little boy with pecs through his back, smiling as instrumental music just started to fade through the through the speakers. Like, oh, that's that's creepy. That's that makes me shiver to me. Um, apart from that, I I didn't like that's a, that's a, those are a cool few set of lines, but I I didn't really enjoy the ending. I feel like there could have been a much more extravagant ending, but I don't know if that's what Scott was going for. Apart from that, a pretty okay story. Um, obviously this must have something to do with the shadow animatronics, but don't ask me what it has to do with the shadow animatronics because I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. So if you guys have any theories, uh, in the comments below, please do tell me. Um, I would like to know what you think about this story. Um, but that's it. That is Blackbird done and the clips is coming out in less than a week and we will be proceeding with the cliffs as soon as I can um so yeah if you if you are ready for the cliffs please make sure that you subscribe uh and yeah I will see you then goodbye